Hello and welcome to another review from the Digital Project Manager, where we test tools so you don't have to. Today, let me tell you about Hive, a tool that I've claimed in the past to be one of the easiest project management tools out there. I know that they have Hive 2.0, I had to go back in and see what it was all about. So in this review, I will tell you my first impressions, what's good about the tool, how it addresses certain core aspects of project management, and what stands out. But most importantly, if there's anything that sucks. Let's get into it. Before I get into the core project management features, let's explore the onboarding because this experience can either make or break a new user. Let's see what happened. If I had to describe Hive's onboarding in three words, I would say it's simple, engaging, and effective. Hive is one of my favorite onboarding experiences so far. First, the information that they request from you is minimal compared to other tools. After creating my account, I went straight into configuring the workspace and had to answer only a couple of profiling questions about my company and objective when using the tool. After less than a minute, I landed on the final question and I personally loved what they did. In a single screen, they introduced Hive Messaging, which is one of this tool's differentiators, and gave me the option to explore integrations right away. But I really like the in-app chat, so I just selected it and went straight into the tool. Hive's onboarding list is among the best in the industry, as it is thorough, has hints to help you discover the product on your own, gives you visual and audio feedback when you complete a step, and has a visible link to Hive University in the sidebar menu. After going through this list, I felt like I learned enough for me to confidently continue clicking around and learning the product. Like I said, simple, engaging, and effective. Now that we've gone through the onboarding, let's look at the core project management features. So when I evaluate the software, I'm looking for five main things. I want to see how the tool does with task management, collaboration tools, time tracking, document management, and resource management. So let's see how this tool fared in these categories. Hive has multiple ways in which you can collaborate. As is now usual with these tools, you have a comment section per task where you can add mention colleagues to notify them directly about messages, react to their messages using emojis, and attach files. However, a differentiator is Hive's built-in chat. This feature will allow you to have private conversations with different members of your workspace. Here, you can choose to message someone individually or create a group conversation to keep multiple people in the loop. I find this particularly useful to stay productive and reduce context switching between this tool and corporate communication tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. Similar to what I've seen in other tools like ClickUp, you will have to activate time tracking through Hive apps. Once enabled, time tracking will be available inside each action card, as you can see here. One way you can track time is by starting the timer. This will open a timer widget in the top navigation bar so you can stop it and even revisit the task at any time. The time tracking feature will also allow you to record a manual entry. This consists of the time you dedicated to the activity, a brief description, and in my case, if it's billable or not. The breakdown of all the information you enter will be saved within the time tracking section too. However, if you want access to timesheets, you will need to add it as an add-on. Team resourcing is an add-on that you will have to pay for unless you have the enterprise plan. The resourcing view will allow you to see the assignments across your team and filter out certain team members. If you find that something needs adjusting, you can use the drag and drop functionality to adjust. However, hands down my favorite part about this feature is that you can create placeholders for resources you will need in a project without delaying planning. Here, I will create a digital strategist role. And if I go back to the view, I will see it listed and I can start assigning tasks to them. One thing I found really useful about this tool is that there is a capacity finder where you can look for available resources based on their current allocation. It's great for finding only the people who can take on more work. Unlike some of its competitors, Hive doesn't have a fancy view where you can see thumbnails of all your files. Instead, what you have is a section within the overview tab that will display all files belonging to it. 
As you can see, no thumbnails here. However, you can search through it and quickly find the file you are looking for if you know the name. Therefore, if you want to use this feature, make sure you have standard naming conventions so you can quickly find your files. Another thing you can do in Hive is create wiki-style collaborative docs called Notes. In this file, for example, I've written a breakdown by week of the activities in this project so everyone can chime in before our kickoff meeting. And if I want, I can add mention them to point out specifically where I need their input. Now that you know what the tool offers in terms of core project management features, let me tell you what feature or features stood out to me. As I was testing this tool, I discovered how Hive is using AI to help you with your projects. And let me tell you, it's genius. So when you choose to use a template to start a project, you can now choose curated templates. With this option, you can allow Hive Mind, its AI agent, to create a template based on your needs. As you can see, the tool asks me some basic information about my project, like what I wanted to create, as well as optional additional information. I purposely decided to give it as little information as possible to see what it would do. After clicking on Generate, I was quickly in awe of two things. The first was a tasteful decision to let you see how Hive is creating your template life. I don't know, there's just something about seeing tables get filled with information that is very satisfying to me. The second thing that impressed me was the level of detail it was able to produce. It created a full breakdown of project activities and even filled out tentative start and end dates so I could just focus on editing a few details before running with it. As I was waiting for it to generate, I thought that this is a very useful feature and it will save users so much time and help project managers and small organizations to quickly have a reference for how to create their project plans if they have no previous projects to use as a base. Once it was done, I was curious to see how it looked and how the tasks would look like in the gap view. So I created the project and after scrolling through the tasks to see what it had done, I went to the Gantt view and looked at how everything was laid out. I just basically need to add dependencies, assign users, and that's it. In my opinion, the best view to create tasks is the Gantt view. Here, you can create both tasks and subtasks a couple of different ways. I'm first using the plus button next to a task to open subtask creation. The second way I can do this is by creating everything as a task and then using the drag and drop functionality to simply drag one task onto the one that will become the parent task. The Gantt view also allows you to quickly assign task duration by clicking and dragging, create dependencies between tasks, and assign resources via the timeline. You can use the status field in the table view. You can also look at the progress percentage in the Gantt chart, which you can enable via the charts settings, as you can see here. Another way of tracking tasks is by going to the overview tab. And that's a quick view at how you can manage and track tasks. I think it's really important for you to know if a tool is going to take you days or months to learn. Therefore, I included ease of use in my evaluation. And in this section, I focused on how easy it is to navigate the UI, but also if there's anything I can do in this tool that is easier compared to others. I've previously listed Hive as one of the easiest tools to use, and here's why. Hive is easy to use because of how the features have been distributed across the tool. First, you have the left sidebar with all your enabled apps, projects, and a link to Hive University. Then you can find additional configuration items in the settings. Here you can configure things like teams, labels, custom fields, and create templates. Next is the project navigation bar, where you can create and access all of your project views. Finally, I love Hive's keyboard shortcuts. Clicking H on your keyboard will display a sidebar with the history of actions you recently took. Similarly, Clicking F opens up the filters of the view you are seeing. Before I go into my final thoughts, I would like to tell you the pros and cons that I identified while researching and testing this tool. It is useful and friendly 
and has a Gantt chart view that can help you build projects quickly. You can also control which features to enable using Hive apps. Finally, it allows you to create placeholder resources to help you with resource planning. As for the cons, the file manager does not display thumbnails, which makes it harder to find attachments. There are also two out of the five core features available as add-ons that you'll have to pay extra for. Finally, custom fields only live within action cards, not as table columns. In my opinion, and after doing this review, I do believe that Hive is still one of the easiest project management tools out there. It has a great onboarding checklist and easy access to Hive University, which makes it great to learn the tool. And even though some of the project views are a little clunky, the Gantt view is amazing to build all your projects from scratch. And especially if you have dependencies and milestones. One thing to keep in mind though, is that this tool will cost you way more if you're not on the enterprise plan, as proofing, resourcing, timesheets, and automations come at an extra cost. And that is all for this review of Hive. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you've learned anything, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.